Okay. So, uh, did you say about Chris Hall? I didn't say that for some. I was going to talk about So this yeah. is the uh, this Danish uh, uh, chocolate maker who is working with Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. Okay, beans in Nicaragua, except he was one bar from Honduras. Uh, one of the reasons he's working with Nicaragua is that Nicaragua for a long time been closed for any sort of forest investment, so they do not have introduced any um, new breeds of cacao. But uh, when they went there, they discovered there's a lot of uh, natural, uh, natural crossbreeds uh, between uh, cacaos uh, growing widely, mm, and they are slightly different types. So they uh, name these types. This is they have Nicoliso, Rugoso, Dagla, Barbara, and uh, and uh, Chuno or Yoha, and they started involving farmers. To, with uh, direct trade, this is direct uh, yeah. uh, cacao organization, they buy uh, uh, fruits directly from farmers. For some farmers, they actually sell them the uh, little trees uh, to involve them in the, uh, in the trade and uh, so for like a symbolic uh, price, like I don't know, one dollar or something. And they have the farmers are guaranteed that the crop will be bought by the organization with a certain. Um, uh, price that is higher than the than the stock uh, uh, stock price, so that's a, a direct benefit for the farmers. The farmers actually okay. benefit from every uh, sold bars. Okay. Uh, all the chocolates, all the beans are slightly different, and that's why Michael doesn't like adding anything to the chocolate because he wants to uh, uh, he wants to uh, emphasize uh, natural uh, flavor of cacao. We ask him, for example, why you are not using honey to sweeten your uh, your um, uh, uh, chocolate, and he said that firstly the honey has too much water, which is not good for the chocolate production, but also has a very intense flavor that would overpower the flavor of the bean. And he wants people could feel the taste of the bean itself. He's a cook, yeah. so for him it's very important that you can feel the flavor of the bean. His chocolates, like dark chocolates, has only three ingredients. There is the, it cannot be pure. This is uh, a cacao masa uh, sugar and and uh, uh, cacao butter. As for this chocolate, uh, he makes something very innovative. Um, the, he show what the first uh, process of processing beans, how can influence the flavor of the end product. So this is the fermentation. Normally, people say it doesn't matter. Bean are fermenting, and this is nothing you can do during this process to, to change it, to 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 influence it. Just just leave them. So the usual beans are put into the pile and ferment in this pile for around five days. But uh, Mika was involved in the research, and he, uh, he was able to develop otherwise. So those two chocolates are coming from one bean, the tuna bean have exactly the same uh, ingredients, you have exactly the same percentage of ingredients, so amount of sugar, cacao mass and cacao butter is identical. They've been fermented for exactly the same time. Just one of them being fermented a little bit differently. Those uh, beans are being turned. All uh, Michael chocolate is being turned during the fermentation for a simple reason that um, to help the fermentation. Fermentation is a biochemical process, right? The temperature and the bacteria, uh, that's, that's how it mostly happens. Bacteria um, do the work and the uh, condition like, firm, uh, like temperature can influence uh, uh, this work. So uh, beans are put usually to the box, like a cubic meter of volume, filled with banana leaves. For banana leaf have, uh, leaves have certain enzymes that help the fermentation process. But some uh, beans in this cubic box are closer to the leaves, some are closer to the center. In center is warmer because the beans are ensconced by each other. Uh, but they have no access to uh, banana leaves or uh, to the air. And outskirts are cooler and have a more um, uh, access to banana leaves. So this is not really even um, distribution of the factors that, um, uh, that uh, contribute to the fermentation. So what he's doing, he is turning uh, the boxes. So he's putting the contact of the box to another box and to another box and to another box, the three times three times turned, those are the chocolates. 
This one is double turn. It's exactly the same time of fermentation, but it's only twice uh, moved, twice disturbed. And that's what creates the difference with the flavor. The difference you feel is only for, for these yeah. little uh, details. Have you tried this chocolate? Mm -hmm. Which one, well, how you describe those? Which one was you think, um, what was the difference? Well, this one is stronger. The, in, in taste. the triple the tag. Triple mm -hmm. more taste I found taste. Uh, the double one uh, a bit immature, mm -hmm. a bit, a bit uh, uh, acidic mm -hmm. and uh, with some uh, kind of a spike. Yeah. That's what people usually say. They uh, and that's that what it is. This one is more sour, to put it in a very blunt term. This one is more sour. This one is more sweet. There is no more sugar in this one, but it's. Uh, I don't really know how to put it uh, in the correct terms. But here, like bacteria were able to finish the job or do it more fully or do it better. And here, yes, it is interrupted. It is not finished. It is uh, not really uh, ready. This one is more full body, it's more rounded, it's more complete. Um, and this one is uh, has this something like, uh, it's not really like ripe, right? It's like a ripe fruit. That's, that's, that's the word I was looking So for. is he gonna do it four times now? Uh, I don't know if he does. <laughs> I, I know that he started doing the back fermentation. Oh, okay. well, I don't this, know this if I will uh, mention <laughs> about it. I've tasted this one here. That's a back fermentation. No, no, no. <laughs> So that is uh, the other you try, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we have uh, bars there which I will bring first.